We got new mythics. We got super busted weapons and troops this week. Stuff's going crazy in this game. I don't know what's going on, but let's jump on in and I'll explain what the world looks like this week. Oh, us poor people. So, we've got some new stuff going on and it is gonna change the game as we know it. But first, Deeds of Fire are in the adventure board, yay for us. I'm throwing mine in the Wild Plains because in the Wild Plains there is a nice kingdom bonus. Ketris gets all kinds of fun perks from having tons of stats and it gets the attack stat. And I did all the calculations and there's no other place I'd rather put my reds. So that's where I'm chucking my reds if you so care. For the event keys this time around we have Zajin. Zajin, of course being super gabo land so if you like your gabos now's a sweet time to open up some event chests. Inside you can get yourself a High King Iron Gut, he's out there, you cannot get a Gob Truffle this way, he's Delve only. However, you could also get yourself a Fizzbang, who is also a very important component in most Goblin teams, so that's pretty cool. But there's really nothing else I would go about opening up event chests for. However, High King Iron Gut being such a high value troop, if you're missing that bad boy, please feel free to open up some event chests and pray. Uh, but beyond all of that, we got ourselves an event. And the event is going to ruin our lives because it's introducing something brand new that is super scary. So if we go look at the invasion event and the team that I'm using, it is using this brand new weapon. So let's talk about this brand new weapon because it is bananas. So if we look at the upgrades for this weapon, it gets an extra turn by default. Cool. It's a goblin thing, right? That makes sense. But what's it also doing? Well, it's doing damage boosted by goblin allies. That makes sense and then it's creating a mix of green and red. So I cannot tell you how crazy and busted this weapon is. Uh, every mix weapon already has a very higher than normal chance to get an extra turn anyway, since it's creating so much mana. But since it gets an automatic extra turn, it is literally impossible to get not an extra turn when you're using this weapon. So this weapon is now like the craziest weapon, I think, in the game. From a mana generation perspective, the damage is tolerable, like it's decent and it's gonna always guarantee to get you an extra turn. So please jump in, get yourself that weapon in the event shop. Up to tier three, it's the only place you need to go. I will give you guys this code in the description. But aside from all of that fun stuff, uh, we've got a new glory troop that's worth talking about because he's also busted. This is like the week of busted stuff. So we've got String Fiddler. So jump in here, push this bad boy up to mythic and get it. Uh, you're getting a lot of arcane trade stones with it but what he's doing is silencing an enemy and then exploding a bunch of gems of their color and then gaining an extra turn so silence is something that we don't see a whole ton of these days and admittedly this is like a really good one and he explodes the board guaranteed every single time you cast him and he gets an extra turn every time you cast him so this is going to be super annoying and busted so also summons a leaf storm at the start of battle so since uh the thief class is what you'll probably be running if you're running a pure goblin lineup this dude and your team is just going to make your team get tons of mana silence the other team while you do it and then you get an extra turn like this is this is absolutely crazy this dude is ugh, it's gross oh, i can't stand it make sure you get him get him to mythic and cry as you fight him in pvp as a general tip, I'll just say make sure that you pack yourself a freeze in your troop lineup. If you're fighting PvP and you run into any of these new weapons or troops, you're going to want to freeze. If you don't have a freeze, you're going to cry and cry and cry, especially since you can't uh, retreat a fight while it's the enemy's turn right now until they fix that bug. So please, for the love of God, if you're doing PvP this week uh, and anyone's running these goblin teams, please use a freeze. Otherwise, you're going to uninstall the game and throw your keyboard, etc., etc. So that is all that crazy, crazy stuff. In the Soul Forge this time around, we got ourselves a couple of big boys in there. We got Infernus and Ketris. So both of these are high value crafts. I would say Infernus would be the higher value craft, craft as far as I'm concerned. So he's going to enable all of your classes that have Fireblade, so your Warlord, your uh, Dragon Guard, your Sun Spear, and your Hero Fan, sure. And even the new Diabolus class, yeah. So those classes are all going to benefit from having him on your team. Uh, he'll enable the Burning, which will get you your triple skull damage. Also very solid troop in general, so I would recommend Infernus out of all of these. 
Ketris is also there, so Ketris is also very crazy, because he's just doing like one of the heaviest nukes in the game, just straight up blasting some fool. And then he's also gaining stats every time you match red gems, not four or fives, just matching red gems. So Ketris also super good, because he blams somebody and splashes it onto the other two. So Infernus would be my number one craft in this list, Ketris would be the other. As far as weapons are concerned, so Flesh Rippers in here, this is eliminating all the armor from an enemy and then dealing some damage boosted by the armor. I'm not a big fan of this weapon, just purely because when you're eliminating the armor, all you're doing is converting some of that armor into damage, which sounds fun, but that's not really like an effective use of an armor elimination thing. Normally when you give it to your uh, hero as like attack damage when you're using a Mang, for instance, or an Earth Fury, or magic uh, growth if you're using a Trickster Shot, that kind of stuff, those weapons are going to give you like lasting potential in a fight, so you'll be able to start doing escalating damage to troops. This is just going to be able to do some damage to a troop. So I'm not a big fan of Flesh Ripper, not a fan. Uh, I'll probably get one anyway, just because I'm me, but Flesh Ripper's in there if you so desire. And then the event also came with the new troop. I might as well mention it. Uh, it is Mr. Toad Squeezer. So Mr. Toad Squeezer's got a sweet name, and he's squeezing a toad, it makes sense. He's doing damage to a tower, and then he's either going to uh, explode the board or enchant all of the people on your team. So yet another exploder within the goblin lineup. So now we've got like, what, No Ben Brothers, String Fiddler, Princess Fizzbang, this dude. Uh, lots of exploding goblins going on. So, lots of explosions and potentially enchants, and then just some solid damage. Um, he doesn't really do anything else here that's too crazy, but he is impervious, so that's at least somewhat noteworthy. Beyond all of that though, this is like going to have some value outside of the game mode. So, uh, you might end up using Toad Squeezer in actual like PvP or Guild Wars context, for instance. So what's kind of interesting about this is that we're starting to see a trend where these uh, event troops are starting to have value outside of the event themselves. So this is kind of a cool trend, I'm definitely into it. So the fact that it's a goblin makes me hate it, but you know, it's uh, it's nice to see that these event troops are going to actually have some value outside of the game. But this brings us to the spoilers, let's jump on in. In the spoilers section, we've got ourselves a faction assault on Tuesday, it is for the Silver Necropolis Kingdom. It is This team is the team that I'm using, so I will check this in the description for you guys to go ahead and steal it so that's a good old team to smash your way through that can scale you all the way up to 500 if you so choose on wednesday we're getting a new little kitty cat uh, apparently it's just going to be cosmetic and it is looking pretty uh, sassy over there so that's going to be on wednesday on thursday we're getting a thief class trial so thief class trial is obviously extremely relevant since we are having a goblin week the thief class is a goblin type so jump in there and level up your Thief class. Thief class is actually very solid, so I would recommend getting that all the way up to at least 70 if you're able to. That's kind of fun. And then finally, what we all came to see, the new mythic we're getting on Friday. So King Bloodwood is in here. He's a super mutanted out treant kind of dude up in here. Uh, apparently he's popular with the ladies. Poplar with the ladies. Haha, <laughs> tree humor. So then, what we've got here is that he's doing heavy splash damage to an enemy, boosted by entangled and bleeding enemies. And then on top of that, he's also just stealing life from everybody. So he's giving himself more health and then just doing like a super meaty hit, because the boost here is 8 times and it's boosted by 2 different effects. So the theoretical boost on this is up to 64. So we need to figure out some way of entangling and bleeding people if we want to take the most advantage of this. That's going to be really hard to- oh, never mind, he does it himself. So he's entangling and bleeding an enemy when you match four or more gems. So he's going to be able to boosty boost his magic all by himself. This guy's going to be crazy. So this is a very cool troop. The bleed component of it, aside from the boost, is really not all that interesting or special. The, the amount of damage from bleed is always super weak, so that part's not so cool. However, the entangling is always a very nice effect to be using. And then, of course, just the fact that it's all boosting his main spell. Super, super fun. Super cool. This guy's gonna be crazy, so look forward to that on Friday. Start saving your keys if you have not already. But that is everything on the PC Mobile Xbox PlayStation side. Let's go see what the Switchers got in their trick-or-treat bags. 
For my switchy switch folks, make sure you jump into the adventure board, get yourself some deeds of fire. I am chucking mine in the wild plains because it gets the sweetest kingdom bonus. And why is that? Because Ketris is in it, and Ketris gets boosted by stats, and it gets you the attack stat, and it's the best red kingdom, in my opinion, to chuck it in. So that's where I'm putting my deeds of fire. But beyond all of that, in the event keys for you guys, you have Karakoff, which is not the most exciting of kingdoms, unfortunately because there's really nothing in it. Um, as far as troops in here that I would even consider recommending, like Medea is kind of one of them. Not really though. They're doing damage to all and then it's also enchanting demons and barriering mystics. It's also giving all mystics one magic on four or fives. Not really super important, uh, but you know, honestly, I just would say save your keys this time around. There's really nothing all that exciting in there, unfortunately. Beyond all of that, you guys have yourself a Tower of Doom climb with some purpley troops. So with purpley troops, there's uh, some teams you could be using for that. I actually created a couple. So if we jump on down, so for the folks that might have a lot more troops than others, this is the team that I'd be using. It's Mang for tons of attack and then Glaceon to smashy smashy. And then of course it's Azora to help get the board popping so that way you can also do some cool stuff. So this is a team that's gonna make a ton of sense and also do tons of damage and just be fun to use. So that's there. Uh, for the lower level folks, this is basically the same idea, only we're getting our skulls out of Zerodar instead, and then Lord Ember to help make some reds. And then Azora, of course, also to just get things moving. So overall, these teams will be super effective. Grab the codes in the description. Oh yeah, and the Doom Cauldron's in there. It's not very good though. Make sure you get it, but it's not very good. Cry face. As far as the shop goes in the glory awards section, uh, you guys have a troop that you can pick up. It is Mr. Wall of Tentacles. So Wall of Tentacles is gaining armor boosted by daemon allies and enemies, and then all other en allies are gaining magic and mana. So this is really nothing like awesome. So I would recommend just snagging some if you need the arcane trade stones, but beyond all of that, there's really nothing too crazy about the troop itself. Not really used in any capacity. But it is out there, so that's kind of fun. In the Soul Forge for you guys, there's a couple of cool options, and it's kind of fun because it's the same options we have on the other platforms. Uh, Ketris is in there, and as I mentioned in Wild Plains, he is one of the coolest troops as far as just straight up damage goes, so he's doing a super Kamehameha Blast here, boosted by his attack, life, and armor on a 2 to 1 boost ratio. So generally when you're casting Ketris, you can expect he's just going to blam people. If you have any way of gaining stats, like if you boost his attack with something like an Earth Fury or a Queen Jezebel, you're going to get extra damage out of this. If you boost his life with troops like Queen Aurora or with Davinia, you're going to get even more damage out of this. Um, so in general, if you have ways of boosting stats in any significant amounts, then he's going to get a ton of benefit out of that. Super fun troop. He's also gaining attack, armor, and life whenever you match reds. Just any reds at all, he's gaining tons of stats. So Ketris, super great. I would strongly recommend if you don't have a Ketris, uh, he is strongly worth considering. Beyond all of that, Infernus is in there, Mr. Bernie Boy. So he's super fun. He's obviously just a very decent damage dealer here. This is already pretty cool. He's also exploding the board, which gives you some loot potential, which is also pretty cool. And then he summons a firestorm when an enemy dies, which is also pretty cool. And then if you happen to be running classes like a Sunspear or a Warlord or a Dragon Guard, this burning thing will be your best friend because this will enable your level 100 talent, which is Fireblade. So both of these troops, super high value, I would recommend crafting either or. I personally think I would prefer Infernus, however, Ketris is also a sweet catch. Big old snack, that guy. But that is everything in the upper world. Let's go check into the spoilers to see what else we got going on. New Mythic Time. And spoilers for you guys. We've got ourselves a All-Seeing Eye Faction Assault on Tuesday. All-Seeing Eye, super fun. It was the first delve that I ever leveled up to 100. This is the team that I used. I will post the code in the description. What's also worth noting is that the Jar of Eyes weapon will be in that event shop on Tuesday. Jar of Eyes, if you're not familiar, is super super duper effective, high tier, get it, must get. This is the most important part. So on Tuesday, get this weapon. Uh, please, please get this weapon. I'll just say that. Hopefully, hopefully it lands. So it's summoning an ice storm whenever you cast it. It's also stealing two mana from the first enemy every time you cast it. So that part's really fun. But it explodes the board. So this is your ice storm version of a mountain crusher, basically. 
absolutely used constantly forever. Please get this weapon. Tuesday, get that weapon. Hopefully you heard me on that one. On Wednesday, there's going to be a pet. It's the Hoodoo doll. It's the one I've got up on my shoulder, so that's kind of fun. On Thursday, there is a class event for the Sorcerer. Sorcerer, not really the best class, but it's out there, so feel free to chuck some levels in it. I don't use it. I tried to use it. Ultimately, not the most effective class, however. And then on Friday, oh Friday, you guys get a pair of really cool stuff. So I'll start with the somewhat less exciting, but also still very cool, uh, jack-o'-lantern weapon. So this weapon is actually very darn useful. So it's inflicting status effects on a specific enemy and then exploding four color, four colors, four gems of their color. So this is basically like a way of throwing on a decent amount of debuffs on a specific troop, but then also looping on top of it. So when it comes to Guild Wars, for instance, this weapon will have a lot of value actually. So please jump in and grab that. From an other status effects point of view, it doesn't really do anything else too special. This burning may interest you if you use a Fireblade class, but for the most part, you're using it for the debuffs and the exploding. So this weapon is actually pretty darn cool. Strongly recommend you jump in there and grab that. But then on Friday, you guys get Phoenicia. So Phoenicia is basically the Sun Spear's best friend, so for all the folks that weren't bought in on Sun Spear just yet, maybe this will be an opportunity to use it. But basically what Phoenicia does is blam the crap out of everybody for like a crap ton of damage. So she's doing on mine, let's just say, 20 damage to all enemies, boosted by red gems on a one-to-one. -one. So if, let's just say you're running a Sun Spear, it is not all that uncommon to have upwards of like 20 red gems on the board so let's just say there's 20 so that's another what 20 damage on top of the 20 we have so that's 40 and then on top of that it does double damage if there's a firestorm going so that's like 80 so 80 damage to everybody on the other team that's disgusting that's like super duper strong in the early early game for instance this is easily the most damage you could ever do because the boost is boosted by red gems on the board it really like even if this said one and that you were just boosting it based on the red gems and the burning enemies piece you could still do just nutso damage with this so this is super cool what's also kind of fun is that there's a 50 percent chance to burn at the start of every turn so even if you have no way of creating burning you'll probably just be burning folks anyway because she exists in the first place her hotness just burns the eyes of the enemy so overall in terms of damage output she's like one of the strongest in the game just you know you can imagine 360 what is it 360 something like that yeah 16 360 320 320 320 damage total across everybody uh, with a single cast so this is super cool from a damage perspective the thing that holds her back and the reason why she may not be used as often in the later later game is because she doesn't have any loot potential but in terms of just raw damage output she is one of the best so Phoenicia is gonna be out there for you guys on Friday super legit um, but that is everything as far as you guys are concerned so that is everything. That is all the stuff. The uh, other platforms outside of the Switch are totally going to be a crazy place with all these new Gabo stuff. It's it's going to be busted. Everyone's getting some sweet new toys on Friday. It's a, it's a happy week. It's Halloween. It's Halloween, guys. So that is all for this video. Tune into this channel for more streams, more videos, all the gems content you could possibly desire. This is Keylime, signing off. Oh, my God.